Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory, starting in the new apartment. And today we're going to have a really cool problem, which is showing that regular languages are closed under suffixes. So what is a suffix? Well, I'm going to define the suffix language to be suffix of L, which is all the strings V, such that there is a prefix. So this thing, this U right here, is the prefix, so to say. So it's the beginning of the string and the V is the end of the string. So if I have example 01101 and I partition it into these two parts, then the 011 is the prefix and 01 is the suffix. And I, I don't have to choose three and two here, I can pick any pair I want. So the prefixes are at the beginning and the suffixes are at the end. So what this is asking is I want all possible suffixes of all strings in L. So what we want to do is we want to show if L is regular, then the suffix language is regular. So the thing is, well, we don't know anything about what L is. We don't know if it's infinite or not. All that we know is that it's regular. So remember, uh, although it's been, it's been a while, that there is a DFA for L because it's regular. The, the language is regular. There's a DFA for it by definition. So let's try to imagine what a DFA for it looks like. Well, we can't be sure, but there's some DFA for it. So there is a start state and maybe two final states, let's say, but we don't know for sure. So what do we really want to do? Well, what we're trying to do is we're reading the string V. That's what we're reading. But the only check, so to speak, of whether something is accepted or not um, uh, of what we can actually check is whether you, the entire string uv is in L. So if we just fed a string into this DFA right here, we're really reading the uv string. We're not reading the v string. So in, a, in one sense, what we want to do is we want to just skip over the u string and immediately start in the v string. But look at this example uh, as an example. Well, the 0, 1 here is a suffix, but also 1, 0, 1, or 1, 1, 0, 1. There are many possible suffixes that we could have chosen. So it's not a matter of whether we could just pick a particular suffix. It's just that any possible suffix could be chosen. So what we want to do is to be able to non-deterministically guess where this split is actually going to occur. So we can't really modify this machine right here because we don't know anything about it. We just know that it's just some DFA. But what we can do is do something extra around the DFA to be able to skip over this beginning part. So that's exactly what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new state. I'm going to call Q0 prime right here, which is going to be the brand new start state. And what it's going to do is it's going to have an epsilon transition to every state in the entire DFA. And there, there's no epsilon transition back to the Q0 prime state. It only goes from the prime state into every state of the DFA. Why does this matter? Well, consider what happens. Well, the, if we just took the whole string... Well, that's a suffix because I could just have u, the, the string u being empty. So the whole string works, and we can still get that because we can epsilon transition into the original start state, and then we can just read a string that the DFA would have read before. But consider otherwise. Well, if we're going to make some kind of skip right here from this state to some other random state in here, well, then that means that if we look at some state, let's just say right here, this middle state right here. Well, there is some, let's just say that there is some way to get from the original start state to here and then over to here, to a final state, let's say. So there is some set of transitions that we read to get from here to here. Let's just imagine a string of the form uv right here. Then there must be some set of transitions from here that goes to some final state because we're assuming we're dealing with a string uv that is in L. 
So that means it lands in a final state. So, and let's call these two parts u and v. Well, by our construction, we have an epsilon transition from this brand new start state into this state right here. Well, this allows us to read the v part in the modified machine because what we can do is just take this epsilon transition to here and then read the v part to the final state here. So, therefore, if we have a, if we have a string like this as in the language, we will recognize all possible suffixes because these transitions will go to every single one of the possible states in here. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment if you were able to find it a different way. In fact, there are other ways you can prove this. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And put comments under the video if you, uh, if you found this interesting. And it really helps with the growth of the channel too by leaving comments. And as always, I'll see you next time.